It's the Spooky Show with Willie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greetings, ghouls, and welcome to the Spooky Show. I'm your host, Willie Muse, coming to you from the Void of Unimaginable Horror. And if you follow my blog, you know that I've been in an ongoing feud with a close personal friend of me who also happens to be a Frankenstein. It all started when he decided to beat me senseless at his dinner party, which prompted me to get back at him by lighting a bag of hopgoblin poo on fire and putting it on his front door. He then retaliated by smashing my skull in with a claw hammer, and when I woke up from my coma, I got him good by doing that thing, you know, where where you offer someone gum and then it snaps on their finger. Well, after that, he gouged my eyes out, and I haven't really been able to get back at him on account of, of not being able to see. As I wait for the local mad scientist to craft me a new pair of peepers, I know that I need to plan my next move, and unfortunately, I think it's going to have to be intense. Um, My first thought was to use this sword, but after practicing with it for a little bit, I realized that it probably won't be able to pierce the Frankenstein's thick, rough skin. Also, until they invent ray guns, I'm staunchly opposed to the Second Amendment, so this is also not an option. I'm dealing with a powerful foe here, so I needed to think outside the box, and that's when I came up with the perfect idea for how to get my vengeance. Voodoo dolls. Of course, you know me, and you know that I'm not one of those people who just dives headfirst into using dark magic to put a curse on a Frankenstein without doing my research first. So before I went hiding out in his hamper for hours, waiting for him to fall asleep so I could take off an article of his clothing and make a doll out of it, I needed to learn everything I could about these pocket-sized terrors. And this, of course, brings me to my question of the day, which is what's the deal with voodoo dolls? Before we begin, I should probably explain what a voodoo doll is for those of you who may not know. Uh, Basically, they're tiny little effigies designed for the purposes of laying curses on other people. The dolls are designed to represent the target of their magic, either by being crafted in their likeness or by incorporating something personal of the targets, like their hair or clothing. Uh, Though there are a lot of ways people use them, the most traditional way is as a means to inflict harm on another. People stick pins in or inflict some other form of symbolic pain on the doll, and it's supposed to translate and cause a similar pain in the doll's target. If you put a pin in the arm, For example, it's supposed to cause arm pain, or if you put it in their heart, it might, I don't know, cause a heart attack, something like that. You get the gist. So where do these things come from? Uh, Well, as you might imagine, the name voodoo doll comes from the religion voodoo, which you probably have heard of and have a vague conception of right now. And and while that conception is probably wrong and, and maybe a little bit racist. Don't worry, though, your horrible racism isn't entirely your fault because voodoo itself has had a very long, complicated history. Trying to boil down the history of an entire religion to the span of a 10-minute internet video is difficult, but well, I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, voodoo is derived from the West African religion Voodon, which was based around these things called voodoo spirits, which were said to be everywhere and to inhabit everything in nature. When Voodoo was brought west thanks to slavery, practitioners of the religion were unfortunately forced to embrace Roman Catholicism by the dickholes who enslaved them. And when this happened, rather than abandoning Voodoo altogether, the two religions merged. Voodoo spirits became conflated with Roman Catholic saints, and this forms the basis for what Voodoo became. Practitioners of voodoo believe in a supreme god named Bandai, but they also believe that that god is so supreme that it's impossible for humans to interact with him in any way. As such, the focus is instead put on smaller spirits called Loa, who serve as intermediaries between Bandai and humanity. So whereas in Christianity you might pray directly to God, in voodoo, in order to contact the supreme being, you'd have to appeal to a loa by way of ritual, or dances, or music, or whatever else might tickle their spiritual fancy. There's so, 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 so much more to the religion than that, but I'm just going to leave it there for now, because it's very rich and complex. And while I'm quite dumb... 
Right now, you're probably thinking two things. One, that sounds like a beautiful and fascinating religion, and two, bitch, you didn't mention dolls once, and you're correct on both counts, but there's a good reason for that. Despite their name, voodoo dolls don't have very much to do with voodoo at all. Twist. The closest thing to voodoo dolls that practitioners of the religion had were what's called a fetish, and even though that's a very funny name, I'm going to be mature and not make a joke right now. That said, I can't control what the void does. Anywho, a fetish was in fact a doll used by people who practice voodoo, but that doesn't mean it's a voodoo doll. Fetishes are essentially talismans that contain spirits meant to empower those who carry them. Unlike voodoo dolls, they don't represent people, and they're not used for the purpose of casting spells on others. These fetishes are probably why voodoo became associated with dolls, but odds are right now you're probably wondering who came up with the idea of using dolls to lay curses on other people, and the answer is... Well, lots of people. The practice of using dolls as a way to inflict harm on others dates all the way back to the ancient Egyptians, when people would destroy wax figures of Ramses III in order to try and kill him. Now, these sorts of practices are what's called sympathetic magic, and sympathetic magic pops up in all sorts of cultures throughout history. As far as this episode goes, as best I can tell, the closest analog to what we know as a voodoo doll is what's called a poppet. And these can primarily be traced back to European practices, because, surprise, Europeans are hypocrites. What we think of as voodoo dolls probably originates with a group of people called the Cunning Folk, who were British people who practiced magic, which was in large part designed to combat witchcraft, because witches who practiced magic were considered dangerous and evil. The cunning folk would sew together these poppets out of cloth and then stick pins in them in order to hurt a witch or break one of her spells. And it was an easier alternative to burning them alive because it didn't require you to chop wood or, or get soot in your fingernails. Once you realize that voodoo dolls are European in their origin, you start to wonder how they got pinned on a wholly unrelated religion. And though I can't say for sure... I do have a thought. As you might imagine, though, given the subject matter that I've touched on today, it's not a pleasant thought. The history of voodoo is a history rooted in culture clashes. The religion sprung up as a result of people being forced to accept another culture and making sense of it as best as they could. And I think that this is the reason that voodoo dolls came into being as well, but in reverse. The Tithole slave masters saw fetishes, and they also did their best to make sense of them as best they could, and the best touchstone they had for them was poppets, so the two became linked. Once you realize this, the question then becomes, why did the term voodoo doll survive over the term poppet? And though I can't say for sure on this one either, I again have a theory. Voodoo has a very long history of being other. Remember earlier when I called you all a bunch of racists? Well, there's a good reason for that. My guess is that all of you have heard the term voodoo before, but prior to me explaining to you what the religion actually was all about, I wonder how many of you actually knew anything about it. My guess is that when I said the word voodoo, it instantly conjured up images that aren't really rooted in anything besides stereotypes. People practicing voodoo were viewed as less than and different. Because they were different, they were seen as less civilized. Voodoo has become shorthand for all things kooky and mystical because what it actually is is people who didn't conform to the norm in a world where the norm was forced upon them. What practitioners actually believed was moot because those around them chose to just view them as strange and pin all their worst assumptions onto people who didn't deserve it. Everything that voodoo dolls stand for, magic, curses, harm, revenge, or things that nobody wants to associate with themselves. As such, from a European-American mindset, it makes sense that the term voodoo doll would survive over poppet because it allows for a distance. We as people have the ability to see in others the worst that we cannot see in ourselves. 
We live in a world where people call out other cultures for rituals that they themselves created, and where people could call other people savages when they themselves were literally the ones enslaving other human beings. <sighs> and yeah, after learning about their history, I'm not sure if I even want to use a voodoo doll anymore. Instead, I think I'll settle my differences with the Frankenstein in a more modern, sophisticated way. <sighs> While I do that, you guys should please like, subscribe, share, comment, curse those who stand in my way, and of course, buy my t-shirts, available below. And if by next time, I'm not in the void jail, see you later, ghouls. Yeah.